Okay. So at least yeah. you want to start recording. And why am I, is, is everybody hearing that echo or is that just me? Barely mute. Oh, let's all of us mute. If everyone would please mute your microphones unless you're speaking. That will help a lot with the sound quality. All right. I, I, I use the headset in hopes that that incre increases it, although I, I did actually go through an entire meeting once with the thing plugged into the wrong place and I was really just wearing it. It wasn't actually doing anything. Um, so we are going to call to order. Um, Denise, are you recording? I am Cheryl. Thank you so much for the reminder, though. Great. All right. Um, to conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the History Commission needs to make certain findings for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. These motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask that each bo board member participating in this meeting state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to assure that you can hear each other, each of your colleagues. So, Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy in Springfield, Braddock District. Uh, Gretchen Bulova is uh, abs excused tonight. Carol Herrick. Carol Herrick here, at McLean, Drainsville District. Elise Ruff Murray. I am here from my residence in Vienna, Virginia. Welcome, Elise. Barbara Naif. Barbara Naif here in Reston. Uh, Ann Stuntz. Here from near Vienna, Virginia. Steve Sherman. Uh, Steve Sherman in Franconia, representing Lee District. Phyllis Walker Ford. Phyllis? Phyllis, can you not hear me or um, are you just having trouble finding that unmute button? Okay. <laughs> there we go. I'm here. Phyllis Walker Ford, left in Virginia, representing Lee District. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Barbara Peters. Is Barbara on yet? Okay, she might be joining us later. I don't see her yet. Yeah. Um, Ann Barnes. Enter your access code or meeting number followed by pound. Not sure who that is. Okay, yeah. Ann Barnes. Uh, there you are, Ann. You have to unmute yourself. Enter your attendee ID number followed by pound. If you do not know your attending number, Technology is so great. And we can't hear you. You have to uh, unmute Anne yourself. Barnes, Anne Barnes from uh, Dunstan Road in uh, Lorton, Virginia. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Uh -huh. Sally Lyons. Sally Lyons in Colchester, Mount Vernon District. Tammy Manorino. Manor Tammy Manorino, I'm three miles from the Mount Vernon estate. <laughs> uh, Sue Kovacs Schumann. Sue Kovacs Schumann, Providence District in Mantua. Okay. Uh, Lynn Garvey Hodge. I'm here, Lynn Garvey Hodge in uh, Springfield District. Okay. Jordan Tannenbaum. Jordan, you have to unmute yourself. Jordan Tannenbaum, across from the preeminent academic institution of George Mason University in the North Hill subdivision of scenic Fairfax County, Virginia. <laughs> uh, Esther McCullough. Esther Are you McCullough sure? in Herndon, Sully uh, District. All right, excellent. Uh, Robert Beach. Um, here uh, in uh, Lovely Fairfax, Virginia, uh, at large. Oh, yes, and uh, you, you're. Uh, you must have gotten some new equipment there, uh, Bob. You sound really nice. Uh, okay. <laughs> Good. 
melodious voice there. All right, David Meyer. Uh, can you hear me? Mm, yes. Okay, uh, this is David Meyer from the city of Fairfax. Okay, excellent. All right, so, um, and uh, Laura, can you hear, can just shout out just so that we can confirm that you can be heard? Laura Wickstead. Apologies, Laura Wickstead is here. Thank you. Okay, just figured we might as well make sure we can hear everybody. Stephanie, can you also just shout out, um, to confirm that we can hear you? <clears throat> Stephanie Langton. All right, she might not be, she might be waiting for, for us to proceed a little bit further. All right. Um, has Barbara come on at all yet? Barbara Peters. Yes, I am here in Annandale. Awesome. There you are. Excellent. Okay. Um, at this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to Lynn Garvey Hodge um, so that I may make the appropriate motions. Okay, Lynn. Um, <coughs> I move that the History Commission certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. Second. Thank you, Anne. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Second, I move that the History Commission certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission and the public to physically attend this meeting in person. And the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the Fairfax County History Commission conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line, and that the public may ac access this meeting by calling 1-800-44-621-3956 and entering access code 129-031-8563. Second. Thank you, Esther. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any oppositions? Okay, third motion is the need to dispense with FOIA's usual procedures. I move that the History Commission certify that mat the matters on its agenda today relate to the COVID emergency itself, are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government, and or are stat statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the History Commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. I have a second for that. Second, second, Jordan seconds. Okay, Jordan yeah. seconds. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any anybody having any problems with that? All right. Motion passes. Okay. Um, as I mentioned during roll call, Gretchen is um, ex is <laughs> she's attending a different meeting, so um, so she has been excused. And um, I do want to thank uh, Corrine Bebeck for uh, doing our um, minutes again tonight as a substitute uh, clerk. We really appreciate Corrine's uh, help through these last couple of months. So with regard to minutes, um, let's, we need a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes and pay the clerk. I move we, we approve the minutes and pay the clerk, Jordan. You and I Let me give you the gavel back. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Huh. Okay. Um, so uh, Jordan made a motion. Was that Tammy who seconded? Yes. Yeah, no. Was Sue? Sorry. Um, all those in favor? Any discussion about the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any uh, any opposed? Okay, uh, and it passes. That that motion passes. All right, uh, Barbara, treasurer's report. Unmute yourself, Barbara.
I move we approve the treasurer's report. <laughs> <laughs> no I think second? I think you're on now, Barbara. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry. I was trying to get to the report, the actual report. I hope you can hear me. Yes, now um, we can. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we actually uh, the transfer of the twenty seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollar grant to the park foundation was accomplished and <clears throat> so our our funds have been significantly reduced we now have forty eight thousand fifty five dollars and thirty one cents as our current balance in the account all right thank you thank you appreciate that um so tonight we have the privilege of a presentation from Denise on the rest and survey. We don't approve the minute, the, the treasurer's report, right? No. no. Okay. That's yeah. Somehow it seems like it's been a long time. <laughs> that extra week <laughs> in March. All right. So Denise, would you like to uh, do share your screen and do your presentation? I will. Um and bear with me, it's always a curve, um, depending on which application you're using to figure out how to do this. So I'm going to start sharing, start the slideshow. Do you all see? Yes. Okay. Share application. It's okay. Okay. Do, so do you see a slide or do you see my notes? Both. Okay. okay. We, we, we don't have full, we don't have full screen yet. Oh, you don't have full okay. So you're sharing your screen and not the app, I think. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Now yeah. you got it. Okay. Still good? Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So good evening. Um I well, I am sharing about the rest and architectural survey tonight. Have I as I've already um, shared with you previously, the, the survey is done and the report is now posted on the survey web page. So tonight I'll be sharing with you an overview of the study's history, the findings and next steps. But of course I can't <clears throat> advance my screen because my mouse is on the wrong, wrong one. Um, but there see. is a little gray square on the screen yeah. too. Right. Yeah, we have this upper right hand there. That I, th I think that right was the Association hand. Drive Historic District, which is not. It's just a. Um, it's just a little some miss, missing pixels. It'll come back as she proceeds. There we go. Okay. But I can advance my screen. Oh, <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that, uh, okay. Sometimes if you hit enter rather than clicking the mouse, or sometimes if you use the cursor keys, you know the you know, arrow keys. Sometimes Sorry about this, folks. Let's let's. Um, Share a screen too. We can just read all your yeah. notes. Good evening. Right. <laughs> we can advance it. We can, we can, as can, as with you we all. can, oh, we can all take turns. We can That's all take right. turns and pretend we could That's pretend right. we're Denise. But yeah. I, I, can't, I can't advance the screen. Okay. okay, hang on for a second. Even now? Yeah, no, I can't. My mouse it's, is not showing up. There are two little oh. arrows on the bottom. Slide one of 32. Does that work? On my screen, I see two little so arrows. She, that's what she's trying to click and, oh, and oh. her but my mouse, isn't, isn't my, recognizing the cursor. Oh, wait, there we go. Wait. My mouse just worked. But you, you all see my my, my notes. In mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah. But that's w okay. Yeah. You want to do it as, can you do it as a slideshow? We're, we're all old, Denise. We can't read that tiny print anyway. Oh, for Pete's sake. It went away. Speak for yourself. Yeah. It went away, Denise. <laughs> okay, so th this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it old school. I, I have it printed, so I'll print, I'll just do it old school. Okay, so let's see. 
I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to do this. Thank goodness you all are friends. Oh, uh, I'm in. You're, you're, you're way ahead of where I would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and start the slideshow. Except you, you, except we still have the. That's a. It's still have for those of us who are hard of hearing. This works. Yeah, I mean that's okay, Denise. I don't think you should. Be okay. You know, oh, now good. it goes. Now it's back. Uh, yay! <laughs> With the gray box. Right. Except Maybe way, the gray yeah, box. Just, it's just because Denise is very, very far away. <laughs> The gray Let's box just keep you the gray box. How are we doing? How there we go. did, did it go away? Fine. Gray line. Yeah. Mostly went away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it's you. It's your screen. It's it's the it's WebEx that's showing up as the gray box. Oh, interesting. I know. Okay. Off we go. <laughs> Hopefully we, we can do this. No. So sorry. No, Here no we apologies go. necessary. There we go. I can't get rid of the gray box though. Don't That's worry. Okay, we we can deal with the gray box. That's okay, it's like a floater in our vision. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it'll okay. disappear. It, yeah, that's good. So, in 2016, uh, Heritage Resource staff conducted a windshield survey of the rest and transit station areas, or TSAs, shown on the map in front of you. This area. Uh, the, excuse me, the areas included were Herndon, the Herndon TSA, the Reston Town Center TSA, and the Wheelie Reston East TSA. The purpose of the survey was to identify potentially significant architectural resources in these planning areas, which may possibly qualify for inclusion in the Fairfax County Inventory of Historic Sites, and therefore warrant for further research. Of particular concern were any structures that had not yet been recognized in the inventory that may have had social or architectural significance to the original planning and development concepts for Reston in the early 60s and uh, 70s. During the 2016 windshield survey, staff first identified previously known and recorded heritage resources. Shown here north of the Dulles Access Road are the Sunset Hills House off of Old Reston Avenue, the Robert Wheelie House, the Old Reston Avenue itself, which is a scenic byway, the Wheelie Town Hall or Bowman Distillery, and the W&OD Trail, which is nationally register eligible. The following potential heritage resources were identified in the 2016 survey. The Reston International Center, the Sheraton Reston Building, and the USGS Building. The Isaac Newton Square Office Complex, which was the first industrial commercial complex developed in Reston, and the Atrium Office Condominium located <coughs> off of Roger Bacon Drive. The Association Drive Office Complex just east of the former Associated Press Institute building on Sunrise Valley Drive was also identified in this survey. Recognizing the development pressures that Reston is facing with the construction of Metro Silver Line and the implementation of the 2014 Reston Master Plan, staff organized a driving tour of Reston in 2018 for representatives of VDHR, the History Commission, and the Architectural Review Board. The tour included many of the sites previously mentioned, as well as the two golf courses and a selected representation of some of the early residential clusters. Responding in part to the loss of the API building, the Virginia chapter of the American Institute of Architects began an initiative with the Department of Historic Resources to identify significant 20th century buildings throughout Virginia. Heritage Resources staff felt that there was an opportunity for a Reston Architectural st Survey to build on those efforts to identify and evaluate those individual resources and districts constructed in the prime development years for Reston, as well as expand the initial 2016 survey efforts. 
The History Commission supported this effort with a letter of support, which was included in DPD's 2019 cost share grant application, as well as a pledge of monetary support, which ultimately was not needed. <coughs> Staff thanks you again for your support. In 2019, Fairfax County was selected to participate in Virginia's survey and planning cost share program to conduct an architectural study of Reston. The scope of work for the survey included a windshield level resource identification survey of all of Reston, a reconnaissance level documentation of eight potential historic districts, and a reconnaissance level documentation of 51 individual properties, and a survey report providing recommendations for additional preservation projects. During the project, um, a National Register nomination was submitted for the USGS building. Therefore, that building was replaced with a Ken Bonner design residence at 12146 Stirrup Road. Also, survey and access limitations for two, the two garden apartments resulted in additional cluster surveys for Wainwright and Fairway clusters and the additional individual properties within those clusters. <clears throat> Shown here is a list of the districts or individual resources recommended by the consultant as being eligible for the National Register for their association with the development of the new town of Reston. In addition, many of the resources were identified for their association with well-known architects. I'll be giving a very brief overview of each of these resources in the following slides. Hickory Cluster was initially known as Reston Hills Cluster. This complex was a favorite of Robert Simons who referred to it as the jewel of Reston. Hickory Cluster was designed by architect Charles M. Goodman, who was hired by Simon in the, in the early stages of Reston's development. Waterview Cluster was described in the November 30th, 1965 issue of Look Magazine as recalling the charm and variety of a pastel walled Mediterranean fishing village. The architect for the cluster was Cloethiel Woodward Smith, who influenced many key post-World War II developments in Washington, DC. Her firm at one point was the largest architectural firm run by a woman, and she was the sixth woman elected to the American Institute of Architects College of Fellows. Polson Cluster, built in 1966, was also designed by Woodward Smith and is one of the earlier townhouse subdivisions in the development of Reston. Golf Course Island Cluster, built in 1966, was designed by architect Louis Sauer. Louis Sauer. In 1967, Architectural Rec Record Magazine designated them as Houses of the Year. And my apologies to Barbara Nath if I've messed his name up, <laughs> but mispronounced his name. In 1966, Simon hired Hard, P-A-R-D, to design Wainwright Cluster as a high quality design and at an affordable alternative to some of the earlier clusters. The firm is credited with selecting Louis Sauer to design Golf Course Island Cluster. Built in 1970, the Mediterranean Villa Cluster is a rare example of the domestic architecture by Robert W. Davis, who specialized in the design of hospitals and office buildings for most of his career. The Ring Road subdivisions were developed in, 19, in the 1960s and early 70s. This area was developed soon after the first single family detached home was built in Reston in 1964 beginning a new development pattern away from the clustered townhomes to a more <laughs> traditional single family development. The Hidden Creek Golf Course or Reston North Golf Course as it was originally known was the first of two projects undertaken in the planned new town. The first being the dam to create Lake Anne. Both the Reston North and the Reston South Golf Courses were designed in the parkland style, historically the most popular type of course for the PGA tournaments by Ed Alt, Edmund Alt, 
whose significance as a designer has not been fully evaluated. The Reston South Golf Course, known as the Reston National Golf Course, opened as a public course four years after the Reston North or Hidden Creek Golf Course, also designed by Edmund Alt. Both are associated with the development of the new town of Reston. The Ken Bonner design residence at 12146 was constructed in 1964. This is the first detached single family house built in the new town of Reston. <clears throat> designed by Bonner, who designed many of the single family homes and town home, townhouse clusters. The ha this house marks a transition from Reston's master plan cluster developments to a more typical suburban housing model. And the Lake Ann Gulf, Gulf gas station was designed by the firm Conklin and Rosant in 1966. The building's distinctive modernist design garnered an, arch an architectural pri prize in 1967. Fairway Cluster, the Sheraton Reston Hotel, and the Atrium Office Condominium were all found to be less than 50 years old and likely not to meet the criterion consideration G for exceptional significance. However, it was recommended that they be reevaluated once they reach 50 years of age. So when built in 1972, the 22-unit Fairway Cluster was called Golf Course Village Townhouse a recommended reevaluated in 2022 when it becomes 50 years old. The Sheraton Ho Reston Hotel and Office Complex was designed by the firm Lyle Bissett, Carlisle and Wolf of Columbia, South Carolina. Further research is recommended into the firm, into the firm to determine how the building contributes to its body of work. And built in 1974, the atrium is considered to be an early, if not the first, office condominium complex in the country. The courtyard can be described as a vernacular modern modernism. It has a series of irregular geometrical shapes, tiered raised beds with wooden retaining walls, and the, the building merits further study. Five uh, resources were surveyed, were recommended not eligible. Um, as likely not eligible for the National Register, primarily due to their loss of integrity, and, and some of them had not quite reached 50 years of age, and those five are shown here. Next steps for the survey, um, the properties that were recommended eligible for the National Register or recommended for further study will be added to the county survey layer. They've already been recorded in the statewide VCRIS system as part of the survey. Staff will be presenting the study findings to the rest and master task force in May. There may be an opportunity for possibly adding text or a map of the national national register eligible surveyed sites to the comprehensive plan for Reston through the remaster planning process, which DPD is currently undertaking with the task force. And as recommended in the survey, any property recommended potentially eligible for mer or meriting further study should undergo intensive survey in the event of a rezoning or planned demolition. And that is my that is the end of my um, presentation. And hopefully, I can exit this and find you find my way back to you. Huh. Denise, I have a question. This is Mary. Yeah. Hi, Mary. It feels like it was about 10 years ago, but I can't really remember. A lady invited me out to rest into a townhouse area near the golf course and a cemetery out there. That's yeah. Cool. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that was, I know it's not an architecture feature, but I just wondered if it's on a survey anywhere. Well, it's on, I believe it's on the cemetery survey. Is that correct? Mary, I, at least we know of it. We okay. it's near um, Fair, the Fairfax Lodge. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Good. All right. Thank we, you. Yep. Uh, this is this is Barbara Denise. Um, am I um, sadly correct that the atrium is going to be um, taken down? Oh, interesting. I, I have not. 
I, I don't know. There's so much happening at that intersection there. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so much is being, and somehow that was in my head. I hope I'm incorrect. I know that they are constructing an overpass of Wheelie Avenue for the WNOD bike trail. Right. right. And, um, and I'm aware of that. I'm also aware of the Isaac Newton um, redevelopment, which you all were um, briefed on by the developer. Right. I have not heard anything about the atrium, but I will certainly keep my just, eyes just open. Keep an eye on because it really Absolutely. is. It you know it has national significance. I think so. And all these years, I didn't know about the cemetery. Oh yeah. So where is it? Mary, do you want to? Mary's done the site I, visit. It's I just... out in the field <laughs> between these town out. I honestly, Barbara, it's been ten years. I can't even remember that I was out there twice with a lady who was concerned well, about I'll... it, and but near the Fairfax Lodge, but it had been the Fairfax Lodge. Is is it? There one near um, oh, was it? What's the name of the chapel? That's. Brown's Chapel. Brown's Chapel. Is, is so, there one there also? No, because yeah. Brown's Chapel was Brown's Chapel was moved from the other side of Route Seven. Right. Um, okay. she, um, there was, was there also. Maybe okay. maybe she means up where um the the it was the um Fairfax Hunt. It's yes. 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 Okay. That's it. That's it, Barbara. And if I am correct, it is African American. Have no at least, idea. at least according to the research you've done. If I can find the research you did, I'll send it to you. To okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That would be good. Thank you. Yeah. And and Liz should be a part of that conversation, Mary, because we don't that would be an archaeological. Right. Right. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure that we're still on somebody's radar. Yeah. Yes. yes. Very much on our on our radar. Yes. Okay. Yeah. May I interject? Hi, Carol. Yeah. Yeah, it's the cemetery is on Hunter Mill Road. It's right near, right beside the Reston Zoo. Right, that's what I'm. That's yeah, that's where Fairfax Hunt was. Thank you, Carol. It's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would just like to say I'm just terribly disappointed. I lived in the Cameron Crescent Apartments in Reston in 1971, and they weren't mentioned tonight. I don't know when they were built. So Cameron Crescent, both Cameron Crescent and the other apartments, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the name of them in front of me. They were um, inaccessible to the surveyor. So uh, they have been um, designated as sites recommended for further study. Uh -huh. Yep, the two apartment buildings, Cameron Crescent and... Fairway. Fairway, thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah. So, so I, I don't have photos of those. Yeah, it's a, and I, I, they're, they're renovating, but I decide, I think that it was saved from being torn down with the redevelopment of Lake Ann. So I think it'll be there, um, but it's above the, it's above the gas station. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I've got a question, Denise. This is Ann Stunt. Um, there were a couple of slides in the January 5th briefing that were called consider. And they they just have long list, you know, several dozen um, <laughs> list of subdivisions and clusters and um, housing. And so is that part more part of the stuff that they're saying we should also look at and don't forget they exist? And right, we we uh, part of that survey um, report was to. Uh, request that she make recommendations for future work and those that considered list um, right. was yep the, yeah, the recommendations cool. for for future work right hey Denise are all of the uh, properties that you showed us tonight and all the ones that the surveyor thought might be um, historic properties potentially eligible for inventory or register 50 years old now or are there some that aren't the handful that I said at the very end, those three, um, the Sheraton, Reston, the atrium, mm -hmm. and let me come up with it. The element. Oh, no, no. The fairway cluster. Yeah, the oh. atrium, oh, Sheraton, and, and fairway cluster. Yeah, fairway, fairway cluster, cluster is, was, is for 22. Yeah. yeah. So. So uh, the reason I ask is one thing I've learned from my 
um, foray into into criterion ex exception G is that you don't need to to meet criterion exception exception G uh, to be eligible to be to go on the to be eligible for the register, even if you're under 50 years old. It is not mandatory that you have to be extraordinarily significant or whatever the language is there. Just FYI. So yeah, yeah. So just because a building is not 50 years old doesn't mean that uh, and it, if it doesn't meet criterion G doesn't mean it still isn't eligible potentially eligible. Okay. so FYI yep thank you for that clarification thank okay. you Denise. you're welcome I, yeah. I did a much briefer presentation that than we had done for the um, when we did the the right. original report presentation but I wanted to give you all um, a taste of what you know what she found and what what Reston, you know, what Reston is and, and why we think it's so terrific. Well, it's the historic court, really and truly of, of I mean, now that Reston is something that there's lots of, there are many pieces of Reston, but this is the historic core that came out of Simon's um, yes. plans and his, his ideas. So, and Barbara, did I pronounce the, the Sour. name? Right? Sour is correct. Sour. Yes. Sour. Okay. Thank you. I, think it's fun, I, I had a question. You know, you said you did a uh, the driving tour in 2018. Is that written down somewhere? Could we like grab your notes on that and take ourselves on a driving tour? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I have it. I have a. I I produced a little booklet for the people that went on the tour so they could. Follow I may still have, I may still have mine. John Burns was there. I was there. People from Richmond were there. Denise was there. It was great fun. That would be really fun for all of us because, you know, there's Reston in our backyard and I bet you there are a lot of people on this call who are just not very familiar with it. That, that'd be sure. fun, Denise. Sure. You yeah. can provide it if you yeah, just shoot me an email and I'll send it to the people that are interested. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Denise. I, I used to live in Reston, but wasn't really aware of that architecture. It's really quite lovely. It's wonderful. We'll have to uh, do what we can to get it on the inventory. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, let's continue with unfinished business. Lynn, do you want to give us just a quick update on where you are with uh, the hiring a new clerk process? I would be happy to. Um, Esther has been uh, a significant support person in this endeavor. Um, we have reviewed resumes, we have had interviews, and we have made a commitment to have a uh, decision uh, publicly made by the end of this week. So thank you, both you and Esther have done a tremendous job and I'm really grateful uh, for for you, you all lending your, your expertise and, and efficiently and effectively doing this so quickly. Um, You're welcome. All right, Tammy, uh, River Farm, you want to update us on what's going on with River Farm? Sure. Um, I was going to say, as you guys know, the, um, the planning commission met on uh, March 11th and um, it was a very good turnout. Um, Apparently, they got uh, 92 submissions of testimony and 18 people signed up um, to speak in favor of the measure. So, um, so it was very well attended. Um, the HS lawyers did send a letter to the planning commission right beforehand uh, with several key points that they wanted to raise. They said that the um, that the planning the amendments were unnecessary and unfair to AHS. Um, you know, if anyone's interested, we have a copy of that. Um, the planning commission, nevertheless, voted unanimously to approve the, um, the plan and zoning amendment. Um, and then it goes to the board of supervisors next, which will be on April 13th, uh, next Tuesday. Um, and then I did want to update you guys on, um, SB 1457, which we talked about last month, which would allow Fairfax County to include a provision in its, um, uh, historic preservation ordinance that would allow public access um, to the historic area, and it would also um, it would also give them the authority to prevent subdivision. Um, so that uh, that bill had already made it through the Senate at the last time we had talked. Had already I'm sorry had already made it through the legislature and was waiting for Governor Northam's signature. 
Um, he did not sign it on the 30th, but he sent it back uh, with a recommendation that it be made um, effective upon signature because um, an emergency exists. So that went back today um, to the legislature and it passed. So now it is awaiting his signature again. So, um, so he sent it back for, uh, I think, of what we would say is a positive reason. Um, so that is what's going on with that. And um, the only question is, do we, do we want to just um, leave our statements that we've sent forward uh, regarding uh, River Farm? Do we want to just leave those be, or do we want to make an additional statement before the Board of Supervisors meeting? And, and just to elaborate a little bit there, um, so the, the an attorney for the American Horticultural Society did write a letter submitted at, very much at the last minute, um, I think the day of the hearing, um, and uh, and you know questioned some things that I that potentially are appropriate for us to address in terms of whether or not the period of significance is the appropriate period of significance, which it, you know, I think it, it, it is. And, um, and, you know, just also the, the value of a, of a historic, you know, overlay district. Um, so I don't know if it would be useful, Denise, to, to add those comments and to sort of retool our, our letter or whether we just send the same letter that we sent to the planning commission. Um, so I don't know if, if I'm putting you on the spot, if, if you could give us some insight as to whether or not that would be helpful or whether that would just be. Well, you know, I, I don't think it's inappropriate for the history commission to, sure. to, to weigh in, uh, in the public record. Yes. On, on, on any matter having to do with a historic site. Yeah, that's sort of that's sort of what I was thinking that we just put it you know on the record that you know the history commission thinks that yes indeed you know this is a colonial revival site and and it is appropriate to to focus on that level that period of significance um, since that's sort of what we do. So you're saying kind of a rebuttal well, points made in addition to whatever else we said. Well, I, I didn't want to necessarily do a, a point by point sort of no. rebuttal, but because they raised this issue and because I don't and I don't know what, what you know, how commissioner, uh, how the supervisors would perceive it. Maybe they would because, you know, uh, the, the site is associated with George Washington and many people feel like, well, why aren't you talking about Washington? Isn't that the important significance? And the buildings, the architecture is all colonial revival. I don't know that anybody would be as in love with the site if it had the original little modest, you know, sort of, you know, the, you know, the little, little sort of shack kind of thing that that was originally there in 1790, you know, um, I mean, it's, you know, this is a sort of romantic view of the past and it, you know, it suits the, the setting and all that. So. Um, so I just wondered if, if it would be helpful to put that on the record that, you know, that recognition. Any, any comments or questions or concerns about that? I think that Laura Arsenault spent a lot of time deciding on that period of significance because it's what's on the ground now. And I think that the phrase you suggested would probably be an excellent addition to our previously our comments previously sent to the Planning Commission. Okay, thanks. All right. All right. Hearing no other comments or suggestions, I, I'm willing to to what Denise what, what Elise suggests. Do you um, um do you need some kind of a vote from us to you, authorize you to write a letter? You know, we we did actually I vote decide. last month. We voted last month to 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 send the letter. I think we voted for both the you know we definitely voted on the planning commission, um, and I think we also voted to you know for the board of supervisors. Okay. So I don't know that we need the you know the the. Vote. This is just. This was just to um, 
you know, sort of fine tune and see if there was any input that you had about what we might say to the supervisors. Good. Um, you know, somebody, if I, I think that's correct, I don't, you know, specifically recall, but I believe we, we voted on both. Um, Richmond Highway, I don't think uh, Tammy was there, there's anything new on Richmond Highway from the last time we talked, we had a meeting. Tammy, did I lose you? <laughs> Where is Tammy? She's way down here. There she is. She may have stepped away for a second. I... Hey, Tammy. I don't know what happened. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there either. <laughs> um, all right, we'll come back to that. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll go proceed with uh, soapstone connector because I know Jordan has some so, something to fill us out, uh, update us there. But I don't know that there is anything on on BRT. Um, okay, um, <clears throat> so uh, soapstone a consultation was held um, uh, last Tuesday evening with the FHWA, the state preservation officer. Um, uh, oodles of developers and um, the Virginia DOT, the um, uh, Fairfax County DOT, uh, and uh, uh, Denise was there, uh, the County um, Planning and Zoning, John Burns was there. There are a number of people um, uh, speaking about this project. This is uh, the purpose of this consultation was to, um, to talk about mitigation of the adverse effect which is basically the destruction of Association Drive Historic District um, for the soapstone connector. Um, uh, I, I uh, was able to get a read from a 4F expert right before um, the, the weekend before the meeting, just to make sure that there was nothing that I could, that, that I could put forth to question the uh, analysis that was done of about six or seven different alternatives. Um, and I was assured by him, and I, I trust his judgment on this, that uh, that the work had been done properly, uh, and that um, there really was nothing that they could put the hole in. That um, now the best, now the 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 whole strategy shifted to mitigation and what we could get before the buildings were destroyed. Um, so so I. Um, so that's that's uh, basically what went on. Uh, there were a lot of suggestions. Uh, there obviously there's documentation is what you do in a situation like this. And John Byrne spoke very uh, early uh, and very um, directly and authoritatively about Hab's hair drawings and their various levels of Hab's hair. Uh, and it was suggested that we consult with Hab's and they would advise what level was needed so that there was some record. We talked about, I mentioned how about doing a virtual tour of Association Drive Historic District, talked about signage, talked about not only the buildings have here, but also uh, the Historic American uh, Landscape House Landscape Survey, which is a like agency and its, its forte, as the name suggests, is on landscapes, historic landscapes. Um, and uh, there was recommended that there be some kind of exhibit on perhaps on Reston or on the on the on the Association Drive that it be uh, that we uh, put something about this in the Reston Museum um, that we put records not only that records be given not only to the SH to the State Historic Preservation Officer but also uh, perhaps to the Virginia Room. There are a number of we were encouraged to let our creative juices flow wildly, so uh, we tried our best, um, and. Um, you know, the, the owners of the property, uh, of course, had to make a statement about how they felt that it was not significant. They would pay no money to do any of the mitigation, how outraged they were. And I, and I curbed my desire to <laughs> let them have it. Um, and um, so, so we are now waiting to see uh, some draft language that FHWA will circulate that will have a mitigation plan. Um, uh, let me just also add that one other thing I did is kind of a last minute, a last gasp in this case, 
was that I know I informed Virginia Preservation Virginia that um, there they compile this most endangered list, and I sent them pictures of the Association Drive, and I have given them the documentation that I've been looking at. And um, they are considering, in fact, today I just sent a little note hoping to get some read before our meeting as to whether or not they've made their decision uh, to include the association drive as a most endangered property. Um, that, if nothing else, will get it some publicity. Don't know that that will help, but uh, it couldn't, it certainly couldn't hurt at this point, that's for sure. Um, so, um, Denise uh, and, and uh, Cheryl, you are, you are also there. Do you want to add anything to my comments about about substance? Let me let me just say that what we got out of this was the we would have probably no documentation if it weren't for the fact that it, the area was determined to be eligible, and that's the it may seem like a pyrrhic victory, but I, I think it actually uh, is is more substantial than that. But Cheryl, do you you want to say anything? Uh, Barbara, you're aware of this, um, Denise. Yeah, I, I thought it was a really good meeting and um, that you had made some good, you know, Jordan specifically mentioned uh, the Reston Museum and including them in any sort of um, uh, public, uh, you know, interpretation of, of the site. Um, and uh, I think, Jordan, was it you who suggested a, um, a sort of interior uh, Virtual documentation yeah. in addition to the standard. Yeah, a virtual. I've seen that used in a number of mitigation cases. Yes, and and I did suggest that. Um, uh, and um, so so I I don't know that they would do that, but uh, also I wanted it made very clear in the draft memo of agreement as to who was going to pay for this. That oftentimes is an issue, and if you don't establish it right off the bat, then that can run into problems. And what you want don't want. Is the buildings to come down and everybody saying, well, I, I, I didn't agree to pay for it. Well, I didn't agree to pay for it. So that's important. Um, what, what did they, who is, that was my question, Jordan, if the, yeah. the developers say we're not going to touch it. Yeah, well, uh, it, it's really up to the FHWA and probably that, and they'll probably just send it down the line to v, uh, uh, Virginia DOT and Fairfax County DOT. My guess is it might land everybody might take a piece of it or it just may land with the, with the county. But they, you know, they've asked for more money for this too from the federal highway administration. Ultimately, it's the highway administration that has <laughs> to guarantee that this will happen because they're the federal agency and they are the ones who are responsible for compliance with section 106. What, um, the, you know, the, uh, DO, the Virginia, the state and the county are not there's no connection there with the 106. They are not responsible. You can get delegated work and payment, but they it's the FHWA that's in the driver's seat here. But the fact is that that because they had to do a section 106, then mitigation has to happen. And yes. so here is the here is the palette or menu, whatever you want to call it, of of what should be presented, correct? Correct. I'm, I'm going to, I have on my list um, to, to um, touch base with um, a board member on the museum and the museum and the young director to just advise them. Um, mm -hmm. That's my tomorrow's job, just that this is where we are. And as I said to you the other, um, the other evening to all of you, um, we would, we would not have gotten this far without Jordan understanding the culture and the language and having the networking that he does. And so I applaud him and our whole purpose was to recognize it. And at the beginning, there was a county attorney that didn't know what a section 106 was. I mean, it's, it's been wonderful that we've achieved this much. And so I applaud you and applaud everybody that supported us in doing this. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank no, thank you very much, Barbara. And if anyone has any, look, it's in the, still in a draft stage. So if you have some other ideas as to mitigation, this would be the time to send it forward. Okay. But thank you. And now I'll turn my attention to the BRT. Okay. <laughs> hey, Jordan. Uh, yes. This is, this is Robert. Um, yeah, Robert. Is there a way that I can get a list of the things that you've mentioned as the mitigation, uh, the mitigation list? Can I get a copy of that? Um, yeah, I mean, Audra Bandy was, taking it was being recorded i'm sure it was taking this down 
Uh, so maybe I, I did receive an email that has a, a, a sort of summary of everybody's contributions, oh, and I can right. forward that to everybody. Yeah, Please that do. Would be great. Please that do. Would be great. Yeah. That would be helpful to me as well. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Very, very good, Jordan. Thank you. Oh, sure. I let, let me also say that the advisory council on historic preservation was represented at this, and the, they're usually not. And that was because we tried to get them to become a consulting party, um, and they did offer their technical assistance. And they, and to, true to their word, uh, they wanted to make sure that everything was a, was um, handled properly. And the uh, FHWA's representative, the DOT representative on the advisory council, was on the on the um, was at the consultation meeting too. So Thanks. some pretty high up folks there. Yeah. 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 What what I have is is not the draft plan. It's just a summary of the meeting, um, but it, it'll give you an idea of the different kinds of uh, uh, mitigations that were discussed. Um, and thank you. That's what I was after. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's going to be reference to something. Um, or what was it called? The Ryan plan, the something, something that we haven't seen. Hopefully, I, I didn't look at the email that came across came carefully enough. Um, but oh, you, yeah. we did ask that that they share that with us so that the own yeah. the various property owners had. Um, I think one of the property owners had had hired a consultant and they came up with a mitigation plan, but it was all pretty consistently. Um, there was a general agreement on documentation. So that that important component, I think, is definitely going to be in, in whatever final plan is going to be there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Tammy, um, I actually, you know, I think I was I, I've been <laughs> there have been so many different things going on. Um, I I was thinking that we were already dealt with BRT last month, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> now that I think of it. Okay. So my connection or my computer, I'm not sure which one, like com had total and complete failure at the most inopportune time. That was very bad. So um so I dropped out just as we were closing up uh River Farm and I wanted to confirm yes, we had done a motion that applied to both planning commission and board of supervisors. So we're totally covered there. Um, with BRT, um, we got that letter out right under the wire, uh, last month. And I was going to say, Cheryl did the heavy lifting on that 1. So it, it was so good to get that done. Uh, I haven't heard anything back from anyone. So, um, I probably need to check back in with, um, Adrian on that. Uh, Adrian Burge Wilson and just kind of find out. Uh, what's going on there, but we are moving forward on, uh, trying to get PIFs for both of the properties. Um, I checked in with the, the Groveton Guardians uh, this afternoon, and they are they're on schedule to have their um, their draft PIF done in two weeks. So, um, and I sort of broached the subject with them to see if they would be willing to do a presentation to um, to a group on uh, what they've done, and uh, and they seem so far to be open uh, open to that. So, um, so I think that might be a neat. Neat thing to happen for the Groveton School, um, and then uh, Chris Barbashek and I have been working on the um, nomination for the um, Fairfax County uh, Historic Inventory for the Wells Fargo Bank, and so hopefully we will have that done in a couple of weeks. We're taking one last stab at trying to get inside the building, um, so we're going to try that. But hopefully that'll be done in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I don't know what the next step. I know that. Uh, that the Federal Transit Authority believes that they have uh, gotten to the effects um, section and and have uh, done that. So I don't know how they're going to respond back, you know, to our assertion that, hey, there's more identification that needs to be done and then we need to talk about effects. So, um, so I don't, I don't know when we'll hear back from them next, but we should be alert because we've been a little on the uh, slow side in responding before. So, so hopefully, uh, Hopefully we'll we'll get a heads up on that soon and figure out yeah. what to do next. To to explain, we, we you know there was something of an impasse where um, you know the the history commission was and the, uh, also uh, D, you know D, the DPD and the Denise's group were were presenting these suggesting that these buildings Wells Fargo and Groveton 
were potentially eligible and should be considered, you know, should be treated that way. And the, they kept saying, no, they aren't. And, um, and eventually what happened was that uh, Tammy actually reached out to, uh, to DHR and they were not fully aware of the conversations and the arguments and the evidence that was being presented. Um, and Tammy shared all of that with uh, Adrian and then they were like, hey, yeah, you should continue to, to you know, push for these. And, and they, uh, she actually encouraged um, that they put in um, uh, preliminary information forms on those buildings. So, um, so we don't know quite where the status of everything is with regard to that, but it was a, uh, an interesting and, and positive development. And, uh, hats off to Tammy for, for reaching out to them. Um, Right. Yeah, they were encouraging. I think it was a it was a good sign, and um, and just in our interactions with uh, with experts on the uh, Wells Fargo Bank and on the um, Groveton School, it it sounds like you know it's pretty reasonable that these should be considered eligible. So, um, hopefully, that's the path we're on. All right. Okay. Any questions or comments on any of those updates? Um. I, I don't have it on the agenda, but we do. I'll just quickly mention uh, in terms of, of new business. It's not really new business, but since it is new, <laughs> um, is that we, we will have a new uh, commissioner who was just appointed on March 23rd by the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Sue, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce her name correctly. Supi, Supi, uh, Mendy, uh, uh, Mehdi, uh, sorry. So it's S U B H I. And then the last name is M E H D I um, has been appointed by Supervisor Faust and uh, will be replacing Greg Wilson. Um, and so she should be joining us hopefully next month. Um, uh, staff reports. Uh, Liz. Hello, Liz. Just one second, Cheryl. If you can let um, if you can let somebody else go ahead of me, um, that would be helpful. Sure, not a problem. Um, who's up next? I think it's collection. Stephanie, are you? Uh, Heritage Branch, Stephanie, are you ready to prepare to present? Good evening, Good evening everyone. Um, updates for the Heritage Conservation Branch for museum collections, the March Artifacts blog for Women's History Month, highlighting Nurse Florence Besley, was submitted to and shared by the PIO. The collections manager attended the collections facility kickoff meeting for the design development phase and all subsequent facility meetings. The collections manager gave a presentation with the project manager about the collections facility to planning and development staff. The collections manager attended the VAM conference from March 15th to March 19th. Paperwork to renew a loan of objects to Frying Pan Farm Park was completed. Um, and objects from the historic collections are being displayed in an exhibit at the Government Center in conjunction with the Archaeology and Collections Branch. Um, for operations and maintenance projects, um, the wheel and flume project at Colvin Run Mill is near 100% completion. A request for proposals for a historic structure report as well as a treatment plan is being prepared for the Banks House. Um, staff also completed an SOP on advertising resident curator program properties on social media um, using Facebook and Instagram. Under volunteers for Historic Sites Volunteer Corps, uh, last month 20 volunteers came out to help with the Clemmy John Tree landscape cleanup and bathhouse removal. The next cleanup event um, is a landscape cleanup event scheduled for Saturday, April 10th at Ash Grove. And is um, is Bob Beach on the line? Should I do the resident curator program updates, or will that go in committee? Uh, Either way, it doesn't matter. I'm online. You you can read it. It's fine. 
Oh, already. Um, Thank you. Under yeah, absolutely. Thanks uh, for the resident curator program updates. The full term uh, resident curator program lease for the Hannah P. Clark and Yeti property was approved by the Board of Supervisors on March 23rd. Um, so that's really exciting. The lease term is 12 years. Um, a BOS public hearing for the curator lease for service source at the Elmore farmhouse will be held on May 4th. Um, so that's exciting as well to two great uh, curator properties. Um, the curator at Turner farmhouse continues with improvements to the farmhouse interior currently painting interior trim. Um, meanwhile, the special exception application uh, is under review by the planning um, department of planning and zoning. Um, the curator at the Stemption house has completed his master bathroom renovation and um, covered porch repair is an upcoming project. Um, and in fact, uh, for the Stemson house and the Hannah P. Clark and Yeti house, um, there will be uh, virtual um, open house events that we will be hosting on our on our resident curator program website. We'll be posting the videos in the upcoming months showcasing some of these projects. We have yet to film the event um, for Turner Farmhouse, but that will be coming up as well. Um, and, and we'll keep you posted on, on those dates. And then finally, well repairs have been made at the Margaret White Gardens property. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, Laura, why don't we go, we'll continue on with you. Uh, with, uh, we'll sort of come back to, we'll give Liz lots of time. <laughs> it sounded like there was some small crisis there, so. Laura, you want to uh, report yep. on the Virginia room? Um, greetings all. Um, I won't read it to you because you all have had a chance to look at it. I just want to bring your attention to the first and last items. Uh, with great regret, we but but uh, uh, archival Virginia room glee, we accepted collections from the Great Falls Historical Society. We were sorry to see that they disbanded after so many years. And they gave to the Virginia Room a very generous check of twenty thousand dollars that goes to the foundation, the Library Foundation, to support the work of the Virginia Room. So, wow, what a way to go out! Um, and at the bottom of the report, you'll see that finding aids uh, have been um, added to VirginiaHeritage.org. Uh, Chris has been working hard processing Orange Hunt Estates, Mount Vernon Council of Citizens Associations. The Mary Goines Roots Collection, Henry H. Douglas, uh, Haight Barlow Family Collection, and then some county papers. So we are our, our, um, our Fairfax County records continue to grow, and we're so pleased about that. So enough from the Virginia Room. Thank you. Uh, actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really it's, yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's wonderful that you're you're getting. That money is sad um, for the circumstances. I, I will point out that you have the uh, the digital photos uh, up, and that those links actually work. Um, I clicked on that this afternoon and had fun going through all the photographs. Well, I did the same thing. I think that is a really nice improvement. It's really nice, Laura. Oh, good. Well, uh, that's um uh that's in the, toward the top. It says FCPL's digital oh. photo repository vital. So um, we're adding, uh, you can actually look at a picture and not just read the description of it. So the Fairfax County Library System purchased this software and um, uh, Chris has been working adding photographs that over the years he and Elaine have scanned as people have requested them. So we're th very exciting um, that those are being added to constantly. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank um, you. Denise, do you want to go ahead? Sure, absolutely. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin um, as far as highlights. I feel like every everything is um, is proceeding um, as that, that's as okay. It, it just helps me actually to have it written out so I can actually follow you better. So, I mean, it, <laughs> so if perfect. you feel like you need to cover everything, that's all right. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, I won't cover everything. Um, you all, we heard a little bit about River Farm, so I won't talk about that. Uh, Holland Hills, um, Laura Arsenault is going to be coming to give a presentation to uh, the History Commission at next month's meeting, similar to the presentation that was done for um 
what for River Farm, and also probably looking for at that time um, support for the Planning Commission uh, and the Board of Supervisors. So, just to put that on your radar, that's next month. Um, the homes are in acres, just you know, proceeds um, is is proceeding as as planned. I don't have a date for the next month's meeting, but the the last month um, there was a larger public meeting held, uh, not just for the task force, but for the the larger community on March 22nd. Um, rest and survey we just heard about. Um, Gum Springs is we're still working on on the staff level to seat uh, a, wor a work group for Gum Springs, but. That is proceeding now, and I feel confident that we're going to get that launched soon. The pride of Fairfax, we had a, a meeting, a stakeholders meeting on March 8th, and um, I talked with the, I had an update from the consultant just this week, and they're, they're, um, they've gotten a lot of good information. They got a lot of good contacts from the stakeholders meeting and have had subsequent con uh, Discussions with those contacts and um, a lot of good information is coming out of that. I know. Um, I, I believe that he's projecting by the end of April to have a draft ready for review. So that's that's great. Um, you all were updated on the soapstone connector and association drive. So I won't repeat that. The African American context study in architectural survey. Um, I want to thank everybody for their support. Uh, many of you uh, read the draft and gave me critical comments um, and lots of information. So I, I want to you know, just thank you very much for all the help um, getting that grant application out the door. It ended up being two, two grant applications, one for the cost share program and then also one for the CLG program. And um, the, today, I drove to Stephen City to drop off the hard copy of the CLG grant application because I turned in the electronic version on Friday, but they must have it in hard copy. And I had to, and I could <laughs> picked up this, the signed copies from Heritage Building on Monday and couldn't make it out there until today. So under the wire, last minute, but it, they I put it in their hands and they have it. Um, Good. So again, thank you very much for your um, your support, all your support, reviewing uh, all the all the information, reviewing the drafts, and then of course the the monetary support and the letters of support. I I know that's all very important um, when they're considering these applications. So um, I did want to give you two updates since that since I wrote my staff report. One is that I had a call from. The county attorney's office this morning about the Civil War trails marker, markers. No, no great update, but she did say that they are making progress and they anticipate um, having a response to the history commission questions by the end of this month again. So soon um, that's coming. They're making great progress on that. And then um, the McLean CBC planning study. I've been updating you all, not in great detail, but just keeping you up to date with as this um, CBC uh, planning task force study has been happening. So the staff report was published. Um, I have a, I don't have, what I didn't, I can't provide you with the link. Um, it will be in the final staff report, but um, if you just Google McLean CBC, so Community Business Center, staff report you'll find it and you can review it um, and if you want to make comments on it uh, the scheduled public hearing for the planning commission is april 28th and then the board's public hearing is scheduled for may 18th and that those are my updates thank you what happened to the um, fire station mclean well staff you'll see um they have uh, staff wording is in red and then anything in red is what the task force wants to remove. So, um, that's the way the public, the staff report is, is published. So there's that, that recommendation that the fire station remain, um, has 
uh, what are, it's in red, it's in red. So the task force has recommended that it be removed. Yeah. Pooh. So um, you, you all might want to look at the McLean CBC study, um, do a keyword search for heritage and you'll, you'll come up with um, what I was recommending, the, the language that I was recommending having in the comprehensive plan and then the language that the task force is recommending be in do, there. Do, do, does Carol and do Carol and Cheryl want to write a letter before our next meeting to meet the April 28th deadline? I don't mind, but we did write one earlier, as I recall. That would have been maybe six months ago. I think so. Well, they didn't pay attention to it then. Can, can <laughs> well, can I, we be any more compelling? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm happy to um to, to draft something. That's not a, not a problem. Um, if you is want, it, is it worth it, everybody? May May I interject here just to um, um just to clarify? I think the letter that was written previously went to the task force. This letter, right. this letter would be addressed to the planning commission and the board. So you, and that you all have a charge to advise these public bodies, specifically the board. That's so, right. Yeah. It went to that the chairman or some or the and the staff person probably. We sent it to a whole bunch of people. So and we when should, do, we should but, do it because because I mean our goal is to have them somehow have adaptive reuse of the building and not tear it down. <laughs> so so Carol, the when, public hearing on the, the it's on the April twenty eighth. Um, yes, the, for, the, for the for the planning commission. That's correct. So I should have this by when? Gosh, I, I mean, I, as we saw with River Farm, I, I'll get you an, a, an exact date, Carol, but as we saw with River Farm, that they seem to, to submit their letter like the day of the planning commission. So I, I will, I will absolutely can get you a, an exact date, but. Oh, no, 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 I, I don't need an exact date. I'm, I guess I'm looking at April uh, 28th. Uh, April 20th, April 26th, uh, when, when would be a good time to have it ready? Cause I'm on, I'm on an overkill, but we'll get this done. Right, right. Well, I would definitely, I mean, April 26th seems reasonable, but I do want to, I just want to confirm that date for you. Okay. Thank you. Is this one of Thank the things you. that we should be formally directing uh, Cheryl and Mary to work on, or can they do it in the natural course of business? Yeah, um, we, you all typically take votes when you're um, support when you're writing letters and supporting efforts. Yeah. I move. Here we go. <laughs> in that case. I move. You know, I'm looking for that da the plan. I'm not seeing it. Um, I move that we ask or direct. Sounds nicer to ask politely. Um, Cheryl and uh, and uh, Carol to draft to draft and finalize a letter to the planning commission. We've got two meetings coming up. The planning commission on April. 28th and the um, and the BOS in May. So really, it could go to both bodies, I suppose. Um, we can we can we can uh, finalize this um, motion as we go. Um, but to to write this letter in connection with the McLean CBC public hearings. I in second the motion. Tammy seconds. You want to say in support of. Oh, you. yes, specifically That's in support what, of the firehouse. Is yes, that, of is adaptive that reuse, adaptive reuse of the McLean fire station firehouse. Adaptive Great. reuse. Maybe they don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yes, I concur. That's a good motion. I'll put in adaptive reuse. <laughs> I like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mary Lipsy seconds. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, we can call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Any uh, uh, any opposed or absten abstentions? Hearing none, the, uh, the motion passes unanimously. All right. So, Aye. Carol, you and I can get together and talk about adaptive reuse. <laughs> well, what I'll do is I'll draft something up and send it to you. If Sounds that's great. Okay. All right. Thank you um, very much. Really appreciate it. Which reminds me. Sorry, I just remembered something when, when she said send you Bar that Barbara Nafe, I owe you a, a, a response to your suggestions for something. For oh, the I, also want, I also want to mention that Sue Kovach, Sherm, Sue Kovach, Kovach Schumann, excuse me, uh, put the link to the um, McLean CBC study in the chat. Awesome. I, uh -oh. find it, I did find it. Is that the one that's March 8th? Does that sound right? Who knows? Okay. Lynn, um, do you want to quickly t do anything before you go or do you need to leave right now? Um, I, I can say, I guess what I just wrote you. Um, folks, I'm going to thank you first for your um, compassion and patience with my needing to drop off these meetings. Tonight is the last night I will need to do this. Uh, it is my final class and my graduation is the 4th of May. And I'm proud to say my papers have all come back with with glowing comments and I'm very <laughs> excited for this new piece of my life. So thank you for understanding guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and are we ready for Liz? I guess. Oh, I forgot about Liz. I'm so sorry, Liz. That, that's perfectly fine. I apologize. I was sitting here and I got a desperate message from someone that too I needed to go on to another Zoom meeting and answer a citizen question. So when you when I had to do that, it was because I was trying to do two things at once. <laughs> so my, my my sincere apologies because I had dropped off that meeting when this one started, but uh, I would call back. Liz, um, I I think you know it's it's really hard to be in two places at once, even even virtually. <laughs> exactly. Um, in any case, um, just to give you a brief rundown, um, staff is continuing to um, catalog the artifacts from Lincoln Lewis Vinoy so we can finish that report. We're continuing and this, this gets very boring because I say the same thing over and over again, but we're continuing our field and lab efforts for Riverbend Park, but we're making uh, good progress and finding interesting things. And at some point in time, um, I can have um, staff come in and make a, a presentation about the findings at Riverbend if uh, you all would be interested in that. Um, we're in the process of writing up um, the report on the salvage excavations that uh, took place at Confederate Fortifications Historic Site after the looting on the site. So we do have uh, one of our folks doing that. Um, we had a small project out at Halifax Point Park, which is um, in the Solid Woodlands um, group of parkland, and they were they were putting in uh, planting trees there. So uh, we did archaeology in the area where the trees were. There had been previously archaeology on some adjacent property where we found um, both. Uh, uh, artifacts having to do with a uh, historic uh, historic plantation house and uh, 
uh, dwellings for enslaved individuals. So we wanted to make sure that we covered that area and made sure that um, nothing uh, was impacted. Um, currently, um, as far as Green Spring Park, uh, they're looking to put in a garden feature and staff will be going out in the field for about a week to do some archaeology before that's installed. Um, we've been working on as far as countywide meetings and uh, other things we've um, and park projects, we've been attending a whole slew of meetings on um, various different uh, properties, both for parkland and countywide. They're listed. Unless somebody has a specific question, I won't enumerate them. Um, on the uh, topic of archaeological collections, um, we're working very hard to um, return deaccessioned materials to the appropriate jurisdictions. And back when in the 1980s, um, when a lot of surrounding jurisdictions did not have curation facilities, the archaeologists who were employed at the time um, were very open in taking collections from other places. Um, we're returning those place, those collections to their proper homes. So again, uh, just uh, that is an ongoing process, but it's close to being done at this point. We also even had some things we had to um, return to the Greek embassy because we had some artifacts from Greece. So, and how they got there, your guess is as good as mine. Um, in any case, um, uh, uh, if you're over at the uh, government center, um, Heather Hembry, and thanks to Denise for her assistance, um, installed an exhibit uh, called Supper Time, which uses um, both museum objects and archaeological objects. It's in the government center case. And I'm told that if you're on your way in to get your vaccination, that you have to walk by the case. So hopefully right. the people who are getting vaccinated will enjoy seeing the exhibit. Um, other things um, that are going on right now, um, we're doing we, we're doing a lot of um, uh, plan reviews, encroachments, uh, projects in coordination with the Department of Public Works, Environmental Services, PDOT, cell towers, et cetera, um, which is just, you know, part of our regular work. Um, one thing I did want to announce, and I may have announced it last month, I'm not, I'm, I do, I do so many of these things that I don't always remember, but we're very pleased that Amy Wells um, uh, was uh, the selected candidate for the uh, Heritage Resource Specialist 3 position, senior archaeologist that was previously held by Chris. Amy's been working with us for 14 years and is extremely um, talented in many different ways. She's, um, uh, you know, she has a special interest in historic preservation law. She also is, um, she did her master's degree thesis on uh, Lorton, so she is our go-to person whenever there are any important projects and has worked on a, a variety of planning projects, public outreach, um, and with volunteers. So we're very pleased that she is part of that team. We've also um, been able to uh, promote Elizabeth Painter, who is has uh, been working in, as a limited term employee for the last 10 years to um, be a permanent uh, staff archaeologist um, working with our um, lab and collections. So uh, we're very pleased with that. Other things um, uh, that have come up um, at the Middle Atlantic Archaeology Conference, it went quite well. They used a, um, a platform called Gatherly, which not allowed not only presentations, but also interactions so you could 
you know, go to a table and talk to other people who dropped in. It's supposed to be, you know, simulate as much as possible a conference like that. So, um, again, it was a good venue. Um, uh, both Elisa Pettit and I were involved in participating in panels. Um, for those of you who are who know uh, Stephen Potter, Dr. Stephen Potter, who's recently retired from the National Park Service, he's a mem he is a member of our, the board of our friends group, and he received the Holmes Gardner Medal for outstanding scholarship. So we're very pleased with that. And as well, Commissioner Sally Lyons was a participant at the conference. So it's always fun to have Sally uh, attend the MAC meetings. And finally, and Sally probably will um, announce this as well, uh, Archaeology, Friends of Fairfax Archaeology in Gunston Hall sponsored a virtual symposium at, um, well, virtual, so with Gunston Hall entitled Hidden Histories and Brendan Burke, Molly Kerr, Sean Devlin and Henry Ward all participated. And my understanding is it is it was um, recorded and it will be available. So um, if I if I get that information, I'll share it with folks. Anyway, that's all I need to say. Um, this is Tammy Manorino. I had a question, Liz, um, about the uh, derelict buildings at Mount Air. Um, I was curious, was it the barn and uh, and what else uh, is coming down? Um, the, the two buildings that are proposed to be demolished are the tenant house um, and the barn. Uh, the barn um, in one of the storms in the last few years had a couple of trees fall on it, so it's you know, it's beyond, um, you know, being able to be saved. Um, the initial uh, demolition work will be for the tenant house. Um, and uh, then uh, that area will be able to be used for staging for demolishing the barn. Um, we, um, you know, we would like to, if possible, right now, the area that's in the immediate vicinity of the barn is very uh, unsafe. And, but if possible, we would like to be able to get in there and do a little bit of archaeology in the area before they do the demolition. Excellent. That's great. Yeah, it's, I was going to say it's been a safety hazard for for a few years now. And I've, I've worried about, you know, the neighborhood kids going in there. Well, um, when I started. Um, in 2003, I wanted to go in that barn and I was forgiven. So, if it was considered really unstable, then I mean, it's beyond it now. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. Um, so, well, I hope I hope there's um, some some ability to do some archaeology if it can be done right. safely. That would be great. Yeah. No, we've done. There's been phase one archaeology that's been done outside the fence all around it. And prior to any demolition, um, we've asked the contractor to identify um, the area of potential effects where their, um, their um, heavy machinery will be seated, where it will drive, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure that those areas are cleared. And they kept saying things to us like grading and we're like, no, and, you know, other words like that. So, um, we will have somebody when that those, um, the area around the tenant house has been cleared for some time. Um, but the area around the barn, we need a specific, um, uh, you know, area of potential effects from them and then anything that's done at Mount Deer, there will be um, archaeological monitoring that will take place. That's great. That's wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. And congratulations to Amy. That's that's uh, that was new. 
So, and to Liz uh, as well. All right. Um, I guess now we can move on to committee reports unless there are any more questions or comments for, for Liz or for any of the other staff reports. Okay. Um, I think we start with, uh, with so Lynn's, Lynn isn't here, so uh, let's start with uh, I'm the American. stand in for Lynn. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Esther. Mr. Conference. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, the History Conference Committee met on March the 24th. We had our WebEx and we had lively conversations around uh, finding possible speakers for the conference. And we still need a title for the conference. So the next meeting is April 28th, 7.30 p.m., a WebEx. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. And we, thank you. Yes, they're tr trying to integrate, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the American, uh, history initiative, the request that came from that committee as well, so. Yes. Uh, and I guess nothing to report for awards. Um, and let's go to Phyllis then. And Phyllis or, and or Mary. Good evening. The African American History Initiative uh, Committee met on March 9th at 2.30 and there were 13 members in attendance. Each um, committee member gave a report on site African American um, history items that had been identified in their district, and those included uh, oral history interviews, documents, research papers, newspaper articles, videos, historic sites, and uh, Mary had compiled a complete list across the county for cemeteries and um, uh, historical sites. Uh, there, we just we had discussion uh, centering around um, creating a template for collecting the data, and also um, there was a discussion about writing a proclamation describing the initiative for, uh, to the board of supervisors. And uh, finally, uh, it was suggested that committee members send resources that could apply to the whole county to their to uh, Mary and myself. This would eliminate a duplication of each district turning in the same uh, source. An example was the uh, National Park Service, uh, the Road to Freedom website. Our next meeting is scheduled April 13th at 2.30. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Um, there was also, you, you wanted to place that uh, committee on the, prominently on the website, the way the um, Confederate names um, effort was, and just, I just need some text uh, from you or, and or Mary to, to put place to sort of, you know, get that okay. set up. Um, mm -hmm. Gretchen's not here. Elise, would you like to report for inventory? Okay. For inventory, I understand that last month the nomination for William H. William H. Goldsmith House was distributed to the commission, and if that was true. It's time we need a we need since you've had your month review and nobody seems to have had any comments. It's time to make a motion to place it on the inventory. So I move that the history commission place the William H. Goldsmith House in the Fairfax County inventory of historic sites. I'll second. Barbara Navel second. Any discussion? So this was the uh, house that was described last month. Um, it's right. in Vienna. Okay. Hearing none, um, you know, uh, we can go ahead and call the vote. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Any, uh, any opposed or abstention? Hearing none, that motion passes unanimously. All right. Okay. So we have and another house on the inventory. Yes, another property. The inventory committee met um, Monday, April 5th, which is earlier this week. And we discussed our ongoing inventory nominations. And then we moved to a discussion of something that we'd like to consider. And first, we'll, we'll do some research into it. For national register nominations, there's what is known as a multiple property nomination. And we would like to consider using that in Fairfax County. I think the best example for national register nomination is Rosenwald schools. Um, they've done the research on why Rosenwald the program, why the buildings are significant, and then each person who does a nomination of an individual school can use that basis and then just describe their own particular individual building. You are thinking that this would be useful for Reston for the, the architecture that was shown up on the, um, as a result of the survey, um, that would fit under the Reston New Town concept. And Tammy suggested very cleverly that we do Route 1 commercial highway architecture. So, two members of the committee and Denise will be working on um, the feasibility of this. Um, and it will, we'll see if it will work for us. Before, and you'll, you'll hear back from us at, at when we know more. Um, and I have no report on any of my other subjects. That's fine. That's that's you know um, not a problem for that. Uh, okay, um, markers, Mary. Uh, before we do that, I have Gretchen's report. Uh, oh, okay. For, uh, the semi centennial report. Uh, she attended a virtual state commission meeting on March twelfth, uh, where the focus of the meeting was a presentation by the American two hundred and fiftieth Foundation staff. Uh, where they were laying out plans for organizing the 50 states uh, for the celebration. They also finalized the four arching themes for the commemoration. I'll just read them. Uh, Virginia is a powerfully historical place, home to sites and stories essential to our American story. The revolutionary challenge continues. Here in Virginia, the American Revolution was a war and more than a war. And we can tell our history to reflect the fullest American story. Uh, so that is the state commission's uh, report. The Fairfax County work group met on March 19th virtually where uh, Supervisor Stork was able to uh, share his vision uh, for this celebration. We discussed committee structures and also brainstormed individuals as well as organizations that we want to make sure to be included in the committee structure and the history commission uh, committee has not yet met. So that is Gretchen's report. Uh, for marker uh, committee, I have no, um, nothing to report on new markers. Uh, Sue and I will be meeting on Friday with a staff member from uh, Supervisor Palchik's office about the history marker contest for Fairfax County students. So hopefully we'll uh, give you some more information about that uh, next uh, month. Sue, do you have anything more to say about that? I don't know any more about that right now. Okay. Okay. So I know that they've been working on it and we'll, we'll see what they are going to suggest. Uh, for cemeteries, uh, I am currently with our preservation group working with uh, Germantown um, with a uh, racial reconciliation group who's very much interested in the Germantown Cemetery, the Haley Cemetery in the Fairfax Villa area with DAR and neighbors, the Carter Tolivero uh, Cemetery and William Preston Gravesite uh, with HOA. The Summers Cemetery in Laconia with a DAR cleanup. Fort Ellis Sims uh, Cemetery in Great Falls with neighbors and a descendant. And the Neal Cemetery uh, in Anna with uh, descendants. And it's keep, just keeping me very busy. 
That's it for the cemeteries. I have okay. a question. Yes. Uh, this is Carol. Yes, Carol. Uh, back to the markers. Uh, what is the status of the Pleasant Grove uh, marker? The Pleasant Grove is, is still um, on my to-do list. I've got your information and what I've been doing, I was asked Phyllis um, also to review it. And since uh, we got plenty of information, I had been inundated, so I just haven't gotten back to it. But I'm kind of glad that I didn't because a friend shared a story of uh, Pamunkey Indians uh, relationship with the trustees of uh, the Pleasant Grove and that of uh, one of the uh, married couples. Uh, he, uh, she was of the Pamunkey uh, Indians and he is African American. So I, what well, my plan is eventually I was, I'm going to get out all um, your information, Carol, and some other talking points and see where we can go from there. And I hope that's okay with you. Whatever. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, and the the inventory committee was look, is looking at the uh, the Carter and the Tolliver uh, nominations. Um, any other comments or questions? Sorry, I'm losing my place here on my own notes. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Ethnic and oral history. Esther, back to you. Thank you. We're excited. Our last meeting was on March 23rd, and I had a full committee present. We had a good WebEx uh, event going on. The oral history project is underway, kicking off this month. The title is Fairfax County looks back at our recent history with a subtitle, the late 20th and early 21st centuries. I know it sounds long, but it says what we need. The uh, four interviews that we had planned, we sent letters to them. The president, uh, the chair signed off and I signed them. They went to uh, Congressman Jerry Connolly, uh, Sharon Bulliver, Kathy Hudgens, and Michael Fry. I've since then had communication because all of this happened since our last meeting that we got the dates for the interviews. The first ones are on the 21st and 22nd. So a person that's being interviewed can choose a time on either the 21st or 22nd. Since then, we find that Kathy Hudgens' health does not allow her to do the interview. So we're going to just move on and uh, we might have to make some concession for Congressman Connolly because of his time schedule. But we're working those things out. The interviews will be conducted at Channel 16 in the Fairfax County Government Center. And the interviewers are to contact the persons that are being interviewed. They are to try to get an idea or a sense of the questions that they're interested in because the questions uh, that we sent, number 15, and possibly they would not be able to answer every question on that sheet, but they might choose questions that they favor or they really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So the communication between the interviewer and the interviewee is very important. The time schedule is 9.30 to 3.30 on those two days. They are our interviews with an hour 
off for lunch. The committee present was Lynn Garvey Hodge, Ann Stutz, Tammy Manorino, Ann Barnes, Sally Lyons, Barbara Peters, and Phyllis Walker Ford. I hope I didn't leave anybody off, did I? Okay. And yours truly as chair took the notes. Now I have not sent these in because this has been in progress over the last uh, few days. And it's, it's ever evolving in our talks with channel 16 to get things scheduled. So we are in progress. We are gonna kick off with uh, with Sharon Bulova, if no one else, she has already gotten her time slot. So she's being interviewed by Mary Lipsy. Congressman Connolly is being interviewed by Lynn and Michael Fry by Cheryl. So we just need to get some, some uh, time set. But we're really excited to get this underway. And Sharon Bulova sent me a note saying, sounds like fun. I'm really excited. So we can be excited that we can now do this. That's the end of my report. Yay. Wonderful, Esther. So good. Yeah, it, it, really, is, it, it really is neat to see it finally actually coming to being is great. Yes, and, yes. And, and you know, nod to Bob for, for suggesting the, the idea. Yes. Of, uh, the supervisors. Um, all right. Uh, Bob, do you have any comments that you want to add about resident curated program or are you good? No, I, I think she covered it just fine. So. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, bylaws, Anne. Hello. The bylaws committee met on Thursday, March 25th, and we had a very good meeting. Uh, we had a quorum. Um, the members that were there were uh, Commissioner Elise Murray, Commissioner Carol Hedrick, Commissioner Ann Stunt, Commissioner Cheryl Petty, and yours truly, Commissioner Ann, Ann Barnes. Uh, Commissioner uh, Len Godley Harch, uh, of course, had uh, a, an excused absence for her uh, many things that she was involved in. Uh, but we did meet and we talked about uh, things that were on the agenda that we had been trying to get uh, edited, and which we did. Um, the, those edits were. Um, um, recorded and um, thanks to um, county staff uh, Denise Dressel um, who uh, helped us out quite a bit. Um, we provided that those edits to the Attorney General um, Fairfax County and we're waiting to hear back on the information that we provided. Um, And um, that's basically my report. Um, we will be hearing back from the AG's office, hope soon, and I will keep the uh, mission informed of what the results are. And of course, we will provide the uh, edited version of the bylaws to the full commission at the appropriate time. All right, thank you so much, Anne. Um, and since you have anything for advocacy, we did not meet. Right. Um, and I, I I'm sorry. If, did anybody have any questions about bylaws? I didn't mean to skip that. Um, A or B, uh, do you have anything to report at least? Um, I owe you a report for several months and it didn't really sink into me until like today. So I was <laughs> okay. like. I will write a multi-month report that will be in the in the share file for next meeting. And Sounds great. 
but basically things have been quiet with the ARB. They usually are out over the winter months. Um, and the revised guideline pro program keeps um, moving along. All right, that's sounds report. great. Okay, thank you. Um, Fairfax City, uh, David, always have to be so patient. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I have three things to report. Uh, that some of you may be familiar with the structure referred to in the city of Fairfax as Old Town Hall. This is a, a structure in the center of our historic district, which is one of our most iconic buildings in the city, constructed in the year 1900. It was a gift to the community by Joseph Willard who uh, was the son of the Joseph Willard who built, started the Willard Hotel. And um, it's, uh, we had a situation where at four, four o'clock in the morning, one of the columns of the building simply fell away from the, from the building and, and collapsed onto University Drive. This um, just happened to be captured by a, uh, red light camera uh, that was right there in that intersection. So we have a video of it. Fortunately, no no traffic was coming through at that time. If it had hit a car, it would have been a very serious circumstance. Anyway, this has resulted in, um, in, in our having Doug Gilpin from Charlottesville, who is an architectural historian um, or historic architect, I should say, uh, come up the very next day, and um, we had a civil engineers come immediately. They shored up the building, and um, the long story short, three of the four columns need to be replaced. We'll probably replace all of them at a, at a cost of about $400,000. However, the, this led us to look at the front porch on which the columns sit, and we realized that that porch was deteriorating, which led us to look around the entire exterior of the building. And so we're now probably closing in on between 700 and a million, 700,000 and a million. So um, we have, uh, we found $100,000 of funds to um, bring in a firm that specializes in both the engineering and the uh, architectural history of the building to do a complete assessment of the building and bring recommendations back to us. But we are probably looking at a, a million dollar um, upgrade of this facility. If you drive through the city and you will see the, the portico that is, uh, has temporary um, support uh, structures holding it up. Um, and we're getting, it's now been this way for about four months and we're starting to get some community uh, comments about it, but we want to go about this the right way. And so this is a once in a, probably once in a 75 year uh, opportunity to get this building right. The building is on the National Register. So that's one issue that's um, in play for the city. As you recall, I have mentioned in the past, Fairfax City, connecting Fairfax City for all, learning about our history and in a new way, and I want to call your attention to a program tomorrow evening that the city is sponsoring online uh, at 7 p.m. It's uh, the Fairfax Schools Racially Separate to Desegregation to Diversity. So it's going to look at a, uh, through, the, through a window of um, the last 65 years from a segregated, racially separate to a desegregated school system to the diverse, diverse system that it is today. Um, and there's a, a, a number of people who are going to participate on a panel. I will forward this to Denise and have her share it with all of the commissioners. And then uh, earlier this evening, Denise sent you something at my request. The Northern Virginia Health Foundation is sponsoring a program on Wednesday, April 28th at 1 p.m. And it's, it's a quite interesting um, different kind of approach. Uh, Heather McGee, who was a nationally known um, economist who has um, authored a book 
Um, it's called The Sum of Us, and it talks about the cost of, the true cost of racism in our economic system in the United States. And she looks at it through several different periods of our history. And so this again will be on Wednesday, April 28th at 1 p.m. Denise has already sent that out to all of you. And I call that to your attention, just, just as a, an interesting and somewhat different approach to the issues that we're dealing with both locally and regionally and nationally. So those are the only three things that I have right now. We are, uh, I will close by saying that we're going to be adopting our budget on the, uh, the first Wednesday in May. And there are several key items in that budget that are related to history, including a, um, a feasibility study for our city museum, as well as hopefully funding for the restoration of Old Town Hall. So with that, that's my report for now. Thank you. All right, thank you. That's a fairly eventful report. That doesn't happen every day that columns fall down. Um, what are the columns made of? Well, it's very interesting because for the first time I was actually able to see inside, they are actually made of wood. Oh. And they are um, they're tongue and groove and they are curved on the inside. And wow. they, the columns actually narrow as they get to the top. Of course, this is 1900. So this, this, these columns were put together like fine furniture. And wow. um, they, as Doug Gilpin from, said, they certainly don't make these, these kinds of columns this way today. So uh, what, will, what will be constructed today Will be will, will probably not be wood, but it will look exactly the same as what is there. We may salvage the the, the um, pillars and I mean the columns and use them over again in some way, but I don't I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But 120 years uh, it it um, it failed. But what was also interesting is that the roof structure above the porch. The beams are so large, and they go in, they go so far back into the building that the weight of the roof of the building is holding up the front of it. Um, we did spend a considerable amount of money in 2019, just before the pandemic, and we put a new uh, a, we took the old shingled roof off, and we put a raised seam metal roof, which is um, uh, consistent with what was there originally. And I will tell you. Quietly, I made sure that that was the way the new roof was put on instead of a shingled roof. And so it was considerably more expensive, but it will probably last for at least 75 to 100 years. Yeah. I didn't yeah. mean to get into all of that, but um, when, when, as anyone who's ever lived in an old house knows that old, old structures, um, while they're very interesting and, and classic and we enjoy them, they require a tremendous amount of money to maintain. We do. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't really have any kind of website report, although I do, uh, Mary, I owe you an update. Uh, you asked me for a while ago, and I think I dropped that. So I'll have to go circle back and make sure if anybody else has any questions, uh, any comments or questions or things that they want to see on the website, just send me an email. Um, and so we can move on to announcements. Anybody have any announcements? Just raise your hand, shake your hand. Uh, Carol or Steve? Oh, I see Tammy. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a well. It's a it's a question and announcement at the same time. Um, I, I noticed uh, Supervisor Stork has a meeting going on um, coming up about the um, the relocation of the um, Pendaw Firehouse. Um, it's being relocated to Beacon Hill and Fort Hunt Road um, and sort of a new aspect. I knew that was happening, but a new aspect that's come into that is that they're looking at relocating the Eleanor Kennedy homeless shelter from the uh, Fort Belvoir pump station and the Fort Belvoir pump station is on our um, historic inventory. Uh, it was 100 years old in 2019. And um, and the language that they were using about moving the um, the homeless shelter was that the building is dilapidated, and they're 
they were really going to great lengths to talk about how run down it was, which, you know, sort of made me perk up and wonder if anybody has heard anything about um, what's going on with the uh, with the pump station. I know it's the last part of the um, of that old Fort Belvoir water system that's left there. And um, and it was built, I think it was built on the remains of the Akatink mill. Um, mm -hmm. Sally might know better than Shit's I do on that. Nearby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, there's gotta be archeology span to be done there. I, I just, it made me concerned about what's going on with the pump station. So I didn't know if anybody had any information on that. I don't, I assume it's on Fort Belvoir grounds. Well, isn't it, wasn't that on the list of, um eligible properties that weren't going to be affected by the BRT? I mean, that's true. That is true. And they said it wasn't going to be affected. I just didn't know if there was something else going on. So are, are they moving? They're moving the, 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 the shell, the, the people, not the building, right? Right. Yeah. They're moving the people. They're saying it's not a very good. And I, and I, you know, I mean, talk about adaptive reuse, right? Using a pump station as a homeless shelter. I'm sure that it's not a, um, uh, you know, perfectly suited for that purpose. So, um, so I completely understand why they would want to move that activity to a different location. I just wasn't sure, um, you know, what was going on with the building, if anything. I just was concerned about the description of it and um, and all of that. So, if yeah. it still belongs to Fort Belvoir, we should talk to the Fort Belvoir historian. Right. I was going to say we should have to see who the owner is. Yeah, I wasn't sure because it's right along the highway. So it, I, I could, you know, I could understand if it was Fort Belvoir property, but I could also understand if it was still, um, you know, part of Fairfax County too. I mean, it's both, but anyway. And Sally, depending on the Fort Belvoir historian, my understanding was when he retired, uh, they didn't replace him. Well, they have had some contract employees there that are staying. Oh, okay. The last time I checked, yeah. All right. And depending on where this is, there has been a great deal of archaeology done. So um, if there was going to be anything, you know, anything additional out there, I certainly could look at it. But I think that, you know, in between the different uh, things that have been done out there, I'm relatively sure that the archaeology has been done. Oh, that's good. Okay, uh, David said he just remembered something that would be of interest. Um, this is this is not this is just anecdotal. Um, I'm a new member of the Fairfax City Council. Um, meet with me, and he said, "Oh, by the way, you, you like history that you might find this of interest." I have, in fact, he's calling me right now, but he said, "I have in my possession." what is believed to be a uh, human hair taken from George Washington. And I said, yeah, yeah, everybody seems to have that. Um, you know, that's, a, that's, I'm sure that's a, 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 an urban myth. And he said, well, I have a letter from my great grandfather uh, that accompanies this artifact that's been handed down to me. And my great grandfather was friends with a fella in Alexandria during the Civil War, whose his grandfather had been a close friend of the Washington family. And um, this letter, he showed it to me and I said, well, I think the person who might be able to unravel this mystery is Gretchen Bolivar. So he got in touch with Gretchen who put him in touch with uh, one of the curators at Mount Vernon. And um, they are continuing to pursue this, but it, 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 it actually, it appears upon for the, at least the initial study that this is a piece of hair that came from George Washington taken from him on his deathbed shortly after he died. So it's just one of those weird little things that just pop up and there you have it. I'll keep you informed as to the, the future um, confirmation on the DNA. I think they're gonna do some DNA testing on this thing, but anyway, there you have it, kind of weird. Tammy, you can debunk this whole thing if you want. <laughs> but there you go. Right, George. <laughs> Sally, go ahead. 
Uh, following up on our Hidden History Symposium that was conducted by Gunston Hall and FOFA and uh, the collection, Archaeology and Collections Branch, we have a tour of Abington on May the 1st at 11 o'clock. That's at National Airport. And registration is going to be conducted again on the uh, Gunston Hall website. And it's free, suggested donation of $5. And uh, Henry Ward will be speaking about Abington, where he did the excavation. So this should be very interesting. At one o'clock. At one. At eleven o'clock. At eleven. May first. Uh, and in register. real life or on Zoom? Oh, in real life on the site. Oh, good. Yeah. So um, just register at Gunston Hall, so we have some idea of how many people are coming. If a lot of people want to come, we may st stagger times a little bit. So. I would go to that. <laughs> I got something. And go ahead. Um, stop me if I've already droned on about this before, but um, we have a uh, Liberty Amendments Month coming up in Vienna, in the state for that matter. It, there was some proclamation uh, last month about it, signed by the governor, and um, it's it's a three a four week from. June 19th to July 17, and we're we're celebrating the 13th, 14th, 15th, and 19th amendments to the Constitution. So we'll have we'll start on Juneteenth, and we will um, we will celebrate the 13th Amendment that abolishes slavery. And then, and this is what the town is doing. I mean, everyone's getting involved, and we've got tours and lectures and artsy things and public art and music. It's going to be a real uh, grab bag of different kinds of educational and celebratory events. So that's week one, week two, 14th Amendment, citizen rights and equal protection. Uh, week three, 15th Amendment, extending the right to vote to all men. Um, Week four, 19th Amendment, voting rights to women. So I wanted, and then we ending up with a multicultural event on the, the last Saturday of all that. I just wanted to say it to you, so you keep your ear out for it, because I think it's going to be kind of cool. It's un, it's still unformed. Everybody's meeting, all these different groups are meeting and putting it together, and applications for events are due May 1st. So you can see it's really kind of coming together fast and 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 uh, but it should be quite good. I think there might be some and it'll be a combination of of zoom and in person. So as as it as it forms, I'll I'll share it with you because there's going to be it's just going to be so interesting. You know, it's uh, it's it's almost nerdy. It's so it's so history and so um kind of sober and detailed so i'm i'm really looking forward to it so i hope you guys can join us for some of it that sounds great i, I had no idea that that sounds really really neat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody else have uh, any announcements or anything they want to share uh, carol or steve i can't uh, do, do either of you have anything that you want to share None, none for me. Okay, Carol. I don't know if she's if, if she's still there. Um, anybody else? All right. I think then we are done, and we can make a motion to adjourn. Do we actually do? Do we bother with a motion to adjourn? I don't think we do. <laughs> Oh, David wants to. In Fairfax, they do. Okay. <laughs> and I second it. <laughs> all those favor? Yes. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all, everybody. Less than three hours. That's good. Yeah, less than three hours. It wasn't quite under two, but it was less than three. So well thank done. you.